It's a good email yesterday. Someone says, ha ha, Harley. Another raw vegan spite the dust. The raw bras have gone downhill because of your fruity craziness. Ha ha ha. That's proof that the raw vegan diet does not work. Ha ha. What do you have to say about that, Harley? I'll tell you what. So I watched the video. Raw bras. Cool guys. Three brothers who are like, you know, truth seeking out there. Just questioning things. Experimenting. And I encourage that. So people say, Harley, but they soft up, you know. And it's like, they were raw vegan for four months. And they said they couldn't train at the Olympic level they were going for, the trials. One of the brothers was swimming at the Olympic trials, correct me if I'm wrong, swimming with Michael Phelps. That's a pretty high level, man. Swimming at that level and not doing all the drugs that the other people do, that's pretty full on. That's, that's a lot of talent to be able to do that. So if you've got the genetics to swim at the Olympic trials, you've got a pretty big fucking motor in there, man. You've got a big motor in there, and that motor's going to be chewing up a lot of fuel. So I'm thinking... What? How, what's happening to these guys? Why aren't they succeeding? So I read the Facebook quote, and it was they're eating three to four thousand calories a day, <laughs> and trying to swim as fast as fucking Michael Phelps. And I'm thinking, hey, there's something wrong here because Michael Phelps eats between twelve thousand and fifteen thousand calories a day. So you got like up here the twelve to fifteen, you got the three or four thousand down here, you know, thirty percent of that. So I'm thinking, if an athlete's eating thirty percent of the fuel of their, you know, athletic idol, and they're not performing how they want to perform, I'm thinking, maybe there's something in that. Maybe if you put 30% of your fuel in your car and expect to drive the same distance as your friend in the same car in the same direction, and, you, and your car breaks down, and you bring up the petrol station and go, hey, your petrol's not so good. <laughs> it's like, hang on, you're only putting 30% of the fucking fuel in the tank. So my suggestion, the first mistake the Raw Bros did is they underrate hard core. People say, holy, three or four thousand calories is a lot of calories. For who? For what? For someone, you know, sitting in the couch or who doesn't have much muscle or much size? Yeah, maybe it's a lot of calories, but for these guys, high intensity, want to increase the muscle mass, you're not going to find bodybuilders eating three or four thousand calories a day, man. So if you want to be a bodybuilder, Olympic level swimmer, <laughs> eight thousand is probably a minimum. I mean, Google a lot what these people are doing, you know. So when Lance Armstrong comes to town, I'm eating the same amount of calories he is, and I can train with those guys, no problem. The biggest problem is getting past the security barricades, you know. But when I'm training with Lance Armstrong in Adelaide this year, not a problem. Talking, having a chat, got through security, all good. Keeping up, not a problem. Why? Because I'm eating the same amount of calories as someone like Lance, or who's doing the same sort of training. You know what I mean? Ch trying to eat 30% less calories than Lance Armstrong, and then expect to try and keep up in a ride, ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? Ain't gonna happen. Doesn't matter what diet you eat. If you don't get enough calories for glycogen production every day, is your training. You are going downhill, buddy. I don't care what you're eating. If you don't get enough carbs and you're trying to train hard, your performance is going. Doesn't matter if you're Lance Armstrong, Condor, or Phelps, or whatever. You don't get enough glycogen, see you later. The game's over. The race is over. And when you're trying to eat healthy and you're under eating, like eating like an anorexic, and you're trying to perform like a massive bodybuilder, Olympic swimmer, you're going to fuck up, you're going to hit the wall, and then you're going to tell people, oh, this, this diet doesn't work. It's not, it's not a diet, man. It's a lifestyle. It's a whole philosophy. It's not a, oh, I eat fruits and veggies because it's healthy. So when people you know, get dropped off the deep end because they under-eat, and then they turn around and blame the diet and say, oh, a vegan is not healthy. It's like, no, no, anorexia is not healthy. Under-eating is not healthy. Calorie restriction isn't fucking healthy. Putting enough fuel in the tank from the best foods, plant foods, low-fat, high-carb, like the, the doctors recommend who are got some integrity, that's healthy, man. Getting the performance without drugs, that's healthy. So put enough fuel in the tank. That's my first point. Three or 4,000 calories is not enough for the raw bras, man. These guys live in, want to live the high intensity, high muscle, high fitness, Olympic swimming trials lifestyle, 8,000 minimum for you guys. Whatever you're going to eat. And uh, the next point was one of the guys said, B12, everyone on who's a vegan gets a v B12 deficiency. And I'm like, fuck, man. I thought we'd cover this, but we obviously, I'll keep covering it until everyone in the world knows about it. So until 6 billion people in the world understand about B12, I'll keep doing YouTube videos about it. Anyway, so this is a great book to read. Why do I recommend this book? It's because, there's other books to recommend, but they're written by vegans. Sally is a staunch anti-vegan, and you can get it in the book. So this is a book to read. It's not written by vegans, so there's no bias there. Um, so there's no bias there. Incredible book. And I encourage people to read this book. And then after reading the book, 
with all the clinical studies, this is full of clinical studies. It's not some naturopath, psychopath, homeopath, woo-wah, spiritual woo-woo bullshit. This is clinical stuff all around the world, no bias, whatever. Read this book if you've got a concern about vitamin B12 deficiency. Could it be B12 by Sally Patchlock? And I applaud Sally for writing this book and Jeffrey as well because it's got some fantastic stats in this. So I encourage people to read this book and then go around telling people that, uh, you know, a vegan diet is what causes B12 deficiency, which is absolutely the opposite because 40% of the United States has B12 deficiency. Even the Framingham study said that 40% of their studies have B12 deficiency. So I'm not sure if this, the Framingham study was just studying vegans, but uh, incredible book. So it talks about if you've had surgery, if you've had a history of smoking or celiacs or malabsorption or drug abuse or, you know, cabalamum G deficiency, all these things I didn't even know about until I read this book. And I was like, holy shit, this is really, this is a great book to read. So then someone, and then, and then when the royal brother says, oh, you know, you're like, you've got to do B12 injections for the rest of your life if you're a vegan. It's like, what the fuck? You can walk into any pharmacy, any chemist in the Western world or in Southeast Asia, and they sell B12 supplements. There must be a lot of fucking vegans I don't know about then. <laughs> so people say B12 deficiency is a vegan thing. If it was a vegan thing, it would only be found in vegans, man. It's not. It's like saying that flat tires only occur in bicycles. They don't occur in trucks, cars, or buses. But we know that's absolute BS. So when someone says that you can't be a vegan because you're B12 deficient, they're absolutely exposing their ignorance on the subject. So the third point, the raw bras, is they took advice from people like John Fielder. And John Fielder, friendly guy, nice guy, but he wouldn't have a freaking clue about real health and nutrition, especially if you're an athlete. I mean, John Fielder, <laughs> what sports he do? What sports he done? Raw food is for 50 years? I don't know. I've had two friends from Adelaide die under John Fielder's supervision. One of them was 2009. It was a housemate of mine. You know? I'm living with a person. I come out from Thailand. They're dead. John Fielder says not to eat more than two to three pieces of bananas or dates a day and try and do a raw food program on no fucking dates and bananas, man. And, and, and we're wondering why we have people with anorexia and all sorts of eating issues in the raw food world because they're being told by these sincere but sincerely wrong gurus don't eat too much bananas and dates you know what i mean absolute rubbish so if you meet someone who's been doing something for 30 40 50 years in a car park and you're taking advice from them that's good but don't change your whole freaking life because of one meeting spend time with that person ask that person questions how does that person perform how's that person what's their emotional stability like are they on steroids are they on drugs ask more questions before you jump into final conclusions you know what i mean otherwise that can be really dangerous it's like it's like getting in the car of a stranger when you're a 10 year old you know it's the, the whole stranger danger when you take a nutritional advice that applies as well so i applaud the raw bras for questioning what the status quo says following their hearts and i encourage them also to think a bit more and i encourage them to use more intuition and and take advice from people getting the results they desire versus these you know, like, oh, I don't eat too many baits and bananas because, like, it's got too much sugar in them. Take advice from people who are smashing it, drug-free, putting their blood tests on YouTube, being transparent, giving objective advice versus smoking cigarettes like David Jubb and saying, you can't eat bananas because they're hybrid, but you can smoke all the tobacco and cigarettes and smoke what you want. You can smoke bongs too because it's all good, man. It's healing, man. You know, it's absolute rubbish. And again, I'm not saying people are bad, but it's bad at fucking advice and it's getting people dropped off the deep end and then sh shouting off the rooftops, the vegan diet didn't work for me. Like, it's too extreme. It's like, if you don't eat fruits and vegetables, that's cool. You don't have to, but don't make everyone else fucking feel guilty for eating fruits and vegetables, man. The foods are the saving the planet. The foods are saving your health and the foods are increasing athletic performance. Come on, let's be real. So my final suggestion is to anybody, raw bras or anybody, people, when people say a vegan diet isn't natural, okay, I want people to prove that to me. If a vegan diet wasn't natural, we could walk up to the next animal we see without judgment, without any conditioning, and just walk up to the animal, follow instincts, bite that animal, just chew into that animal, and have that warm blood in our mouth and just relish that. And please have someone film that, put it up on YouTube and email me. My email address is here. Anyone can contact me anytime. I like to be contactable. So email me with that video because I want to see it. I want to see the video that proves a vegan diet is not natural.
and that walking up to an animal, and the next animal you see with no judgment, with no criteria, just picking it up and eating it, I want to see that because no one in the, in the last eight years since I put that challenge up has been able to do that for me. So wrap it up, the first problem with the raw brows is they're under eating big time. 3,000 calories a day ain't going to cut it if you want to increase your muscle mass, if you're already a high intensity person, if you want to increase that intensity in swim at Olympic trials, 3,000 calories ain't going to do it, man. 8,000 minimum for you guys. Two, saying I can't be a vegan because it's not natural and that we're designed to walk up to cats and dogs and just bite into them and that B12 deficiency is only found in vegans, and vegans only use B12 injections. It's like absolute rubbish. All Olympic athletes use B12 injections. Ask them, ask the coaches, email them. They'll tell you what's happening. Michael Phelps uses B12 injections. Third one, taking advice from people who aren't getting the results you desire, who aren't transparent. People are saying, I'm a breatharian, and I've got like, you know, bodybuilder's physique, but I'm a breatharian. It's like fucking bullshit, man. I haven't eaten for 20 years, and I'm like super strong. It's like bullshit, man. So, third one is taking advice from people who aren't getting results you desire. John Field, all those guys, man, David Jubb, the, the people who are doing the drugs, or have got the anorexia or whatever, who just, you know, whatever. That's the three things, man. Improve on those, and keep on charging down the path. So does that make sense? That's how we make the mistakes, and I'm glad people do videos and send me emails and stuff like that, because then we can get to the bottom dollar, the bottom line. Why are people making mistakes? It's like a crash investigation unit. You can call me the crash investigation unit of the health industry, the fitness industry. Why do people crash a lot to go there and analyze the crash site and check out, oh, what happened? Okay, we're coming to this corner too fast. There was gravel on the road. These people were under eating. They had missed limited beliefs that they were following bad advice from other people who weren't getting the results they desire. Crash investigation unit, Durin Rod, I'm here. Send me the next crash. Case closed.